scale, <coughs> uh, excuse me, to harvest or not to harvest, the moral dilemma that follows you throughout the Bioshock experience and defines the fate of the player. This choice lays at the center of your Bioshock story and has repercussions that can be felt in nearly every facet of the gameplay. Part of Bioshock's lasting legacy, of course, are the little sisters and this moral choice that presented itself to the player. Uh, you know, everyone became a water cooler conversation about like, well, did you save them? Did you harvest them? That concept, Ken, was that something that came about early in development or that, that binary choice? When did that come into the game? When did, I don't remember when. I mean, we had the concept of, 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 of them being protected, but I can't remember when yeah, you actually certainly chose. Wasn't, when there were slugs, it was not meaningful. I think there was... Um, do you salt it? Do you not yeah, salt yeah. it? Yeah. There were resources that you could get, but it, there was no choice there, right? It was The choice was, do I want to fight the Big Daddy or not? Yeah. I think once we got into the realm of they have to be empathetic, the player has to have some feeling towards them, which you're not going to get from slugs, right. then we start seeing that opportunity there of like, okay, nobody's going to want to do harm to these girls or do they like and do we allow them to it was a yeah we weren't comfortable with it at first when it, well, when it first well, came up that we could uh i think it was important that we were that it was a way to reflect the sort of larger economic questions of a, of a world like rapture where like you know where the economy drives everything are there you know where are there any limits to economic decision making versus moral decision making because that's sort of what you you know the randian notion is that it's not the role that you don't sort of legislate morality. Let's try to take that to an extreme and see where that ends up. And Little Sisters sort of became that. And in this world, they became a commodity. And the question we have for the player is, are you willing, you know, they're a commodity to you as well, potentially, or you want to participate in the commodification. There was, I think, a fair amount of nervousness internally at the publisher about it for a little while, but pretty quickly they were able to sort of say, look, we, we trust you guys and go, you know, do this. And I only had a few, the press, and this sort of happens over and over again, the games press worried a ton about it and like right. wring their hands about it. They ever recognized it was a setting topic, but that it was done to a larger purpose, that it wasn't just sort of like, hey, let's, this is the game where you kill children. And well, I remember, and that was a sensitivity. I know that like you guys wanted to call them little sisters, not little girls, and it was, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't killing them, it was harvesting them. And I mean, you, you did some things probably on purpose, right, to sort of explain that this, you know, you weren't, you know, you weren't doing anything vicious to them, right? Well, I mean, you are, you, you do sort of, they do sort of disappear out of you and a, a big slug out of their belly, yeah. you know, comes up <laughs> that you, well, we, we didn't want that to be graphic. We wanted it to right. be very clear yeah. that you were, that you were that killing. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. But it was not, it was not intended to be a, a prurient in right. terms of, hey, let's, you know, this is a simulation of, of pulling a sea slug out of a little girl's belly. But we wanted you to understand the, the, that you were making a very diabolical more pact, moral economic pact there. And we think that came across, and I think it came across well enough, and the, I think the test of how well it came across is, I think most people didn't really th thought of it as a, am I willing to do this thing or not? Right. And I, people would tell us stories how like their girlfriend saw them harvesting and then they, they literally slept on the couch that night. Right. And, and that's, you know, that's an interesting, uh, you know, that was, that was interesting how people connected to a 3D mesh that's really no different than any other 3D mesh in the world. Like yeah. this little, little sister, she's not a person. She's a 3D asset, a virtual 3D asset, right, that has a voice actor connected to it who's an adult woman. And nobody was actually getting harmed, but right. people still emotionally connected to them and made, and, and made an emotional connection. And also, you know, I think when you're playing, you don't really know what the impact of that choice is. Yes. And that's sort of the, you know, the, the curiosity of like, well, you know, you're a gamer, so it's like, am I going to game the system? Which one should I pick? How does this impact things? As you go through the game, it's never, never really fully clear what that choice is going to lead to, right? And the, the ambiguousness of that was something you wanted to sort of create mystery around throughout the game? Yeah, I mean, we went back and forth a lot about what the rewards for harvesting versus saving would be. And actually, I think we should have really pushed further that the rewards for saving were much more, much more, should have been much more meager than the rewards for harvesting, just yeah. to really sort of 
put you up against the wall, push you up against the wall and say, yeah. you know, are you going to stick by your moral guns here? Because you're going to pay for it. Yeah. Because that's usually the way life is, right? Yeah. It's always harder to take a moral path than it is to take an amoral path. Um, but there's incentives to take amoral paths because it's the easier path. <laughs> As you play through the game, eventually you get to the ending, and um, as we know now, there were sort of two endings that uh, you know were affected by that choice, um, and that was something at the time. I know you said publicly that you weren't in favor of sort of having two endings. Was that in part because you know the game is about not having choice, or did you think that you know the two endings were? I don't know, like I, I'm interested for narratively, like why you didn't want to go that path. It seemed forced, given that the game really sort of almost made a joke, I mean a meta commentary joke about the lack of agency in right. games, the lack of meaning of those choices given that the, you have these two endings. I guess you could make an argument that, well, you were free, you were given choice of the, you know, when once Ryan's dead, and that's really what it's about. But it, I think we also had didn't really have enough time to, um, to execute on those Super Bowl. I was pretty happy with how the the happier one came out, you know, with the, the, the little sister focus, but it's a much more subtle story than I would have time to tell about you, sort of your slow descent into, you know, moral chaos and, right. and, and, and dissolute living and all the things that sort of come along with a life that is sort of separate from a moral structure. That's a long story. And so, I mean, you just, you were just switching a cutscene. It wasn't like you were doing sort of no. a whole other level that was different no. or something. So the choice was there's two cutscenes with very tight time and or, economic or just start a nuclear war. Yes, and that's not you know <laughs> you're a nice guy or you start a nuclear yeah. war. Yeah, and and because we had so many problems on our plate, that was something I had to sort of do in the spare time. So I was pretty happy with one, but not very happy with the other. I know you had said publicly before that there was a another sort of more ambiguous ending that you had originally planned, or what what would you have done? Uh, th there was a notion of an ambiguous setting, which if I had, if I just wrote one, I would have found a way that would just talk about the moral ambiguity of the world rather than the sort of, you know, positive or negative, because it is such a, look, I, I think we really tried with Bioshock not to sort of make a game about good, pe evil, good and evil. It was really about uh, circumstances and what circumstances lead people to. Right. and how they delude themselves with ideology to do things that they would think are evil, but it's okay because it's for the good cause. Right. And um, that's, a, that's what I probably would have, if I just had one to write, I'd probably focus more on that, is, you know, how, how difficult it is to sort of align, to, when, when, I, when you start being driven by ideology rather than being in the moment and thinking about the impact of what you're doing. Right. Sean, you talked to gamers, I'm sure, over the years. Did you ever get a sense of how many people harvested versus saved, and what was there any sort of data? I mean, this is before the days where you get telemetry and data on like what people picked and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, but. anecdotally, it seems like more people saving little sisters. Oh. Although, I, yeah, I have a few friends that were. You know, I just harvested every single one. I wanted to see what happened. So, I mean, I don't know if that was more, you know, the game developer and them trying to see, you know, what what would right. happen. But certainly, for the most part, I, I think most people. Which I guess is a good thing. It means that maybe people are good at heart. You know, they, they kind of feel bad. They want to they, they want to save the little sisters. So, yeah, I'll say it. You know, the needle sways towards the green there. Time for bed, bye, Mr. B. Hurry, hurry, Mr. Bubbles.